Uh, this is from a short story called Into the Woods. Uh, it, the narrator is this 16-year-old Jenny who has begun to suspect that the hiking leader of this kind of troop of girls is possibly a pedophile. Uh, so this is from the end. It's not really funny. Just <laughs> I chair right now. <laughs> um, and this scene is from like the very end, and so she's kind of just she'd fallen asleep by the campfire and she's just woken up. There were no stars, no moon, just the overcast sky in the night. I couldn't find the footpath, so I stumbled through the weeds and bushes into the clearing where the lean to was. I walked to the open side. I squinted into the darkness, unsure at first. There was only one lump, Serena. A jab into my stomach. I had fucked up, fucked up beyond belief. Serena, I hissed. Serena, where's Tristan? She sat up, her eyes puffed closed. Huh? Where's Tristan? She looked over to her right. He's not here? I brought my hand to my forehead, realized it was shaking. The certainty and clarity had ebbed into a form of lucid panic I had never experienced before. Flashlight? What? She cocked her head a little. Flashlight, Serena. Tristan is gone and we need to check on the girls. Give me a flashlight. She nodded, confused still. Twisted her whole body to the left and found it. Handed it over to me. I ran, branches scratching my legs, stumbling over roots and rocks. The forest was a dark place. A prison. A stomach. Instead of being in a line like last night, the girls had huddled together in a circle, all of their bodies forming the spokes of a wheel. A few of them shifted and rolled over when I shone the light on them. I counted. Twice. Allie was gone. I called into the night for her, shuffling through the weeds and fallen leaves. I could only see bits of the brush I was walking through. I expected an echo, something. The trees just ate up the noise. I stumbled through the trails, checking each of the empty lean-tos. I knew that whenever my flashlight found something, it would be gory, eyes pasty and flesh dripping. I switched to a whisper, as if someone else would hear me. Allison. I stumbled back to the lean-to with Serena. She'd gotten dressed and hopped out. She was waiting for me. The trees rattled. You're freaking me out. Stop raving like an asshole and tell me what's going on. Tristan and Allie are gone, I hissed. How could you have let this happen? What? He's taken her, and I couldn't finish the sentence. What are you even saying? You haven't noticed the way he is with the girls? He's all over them. She stepped back. What is wrong with you? Me? You get jealous that some guy is into me instead of you, so you just make up some sort of bullshit to get him fired? My mouth dropped open. I started crying out of sheer confusion and frustration. I have to go check, I said, moving away. Maybe I'd missed a lean-to. There were the outhouses. There were the woods. I'd never find her. Allie, I called out again. I shone my flashlight into another empty lean-to. Something gleamed. I yelped and forced myself to hold my hand steady. The gleam lumbered across the floor of the hut. A rat. I found the trail to the outhouses. Dimly, behind me, I could hear rustles, voices. I'd woken the girls. Esther's words echoed back to me, and I felt like I was floating out above the forest, way, way out, the vantage point of the universe, looking into this immense darkness and seeing only this useless little speck of light. As I moved from the trees into the clearing, a gust of wind pushed hard against my skin. I nearly stopped breathing. There was someone standing next to the outhouse. I ran until I was next to him, practically barreling him over. Get away from her. Whoa, what? He was wearing a fleece hat that made him look old, like his skin was too loose for his face. He looked at me and his face darkened. I gave him my best disgusted look. Allie, are you in there? Are you okay? I called into the door. I'm fine, go away, came the voice back. This surprised me. Tristan took me by my elbow and tugged me away. Don't touch me, I screeched, jerking away and smacking at him like we were having a slap fight. Whoa, whoa, okay, God. He held his hands up in surrender, lowered his voice. She came to wake me up. I, I guess she wet the bed. She was really embarrassed and didn't want you guys to know. Why would she tell you? It happens all the time. The kids are afraid to go to the outhouse alone in the middle of the night, and it happens. What happened to you? Did you fall? I looked down at my legs, covered in scrapes and scratches. They didn't sting. Could Allie really have chosen to wake Tristan instead of me or Serena? I know what I saw, I said. I drew myself up the way Serena did when the girls wouldn't get out of the pool and we had to get to the big barn for the next activity. Her voice got low instead of loud then. It scared the crap out of the girls. You stay the hell away from these girls. He looked like he was holding back a laugh. Excuse me, he said. A swirl of wind blew my hair over my face and I pushed it away. That was when I realized what I must look like to him, what Serena and I looked like to him all along, like little kids. A click. Allie came out of the outhouse. Jenny, she said. I rushed to her, kneeled. Yeah, hon, you okay? 
She looked up at Tristan, then back to me. He told you? I moved to be between them. You tell me. She hesitated. Her lip quivered a little. Jenny, Serena was coming towards me. Are you completely insane? The wind gusted again and I shivered. Goosebumps prickled up my arms. I wasn't wearing enough clothing. Everyone else was in their sweats. Allie, are you okay? I repeated to her. Serena seemed to register for the first time that something was wrong. She looked over to Tristan. He shook his head and shrugged his shoulders. There was an accident. It's not a big deal. Right, Allie? Allie looked down at her feet. Right. Serena opened her arms for a hug, but Allie brushed by her. I just want to go back to sleep. She trudged into the darkness. Serena glanced at Tristan. He signaled for her to go, that he'd just be a minute. She followed Allie away. He turned back to me, the light from his headlamp making me squint and look down. Jenny, what you're implying would be really bad for me. You know that, right? I looked up at him as well as I could with the light in my eyes. I know what you did. He rolled his eyes. Go check her sleeping bag. It's hanging out to dry next to the water pump. Come on, how long have I been working here? If I were some sort of pedophile, wouldn't somebody have reported me before this? I shrugged, hugged my arms around myself to protect me. Look, you got pretty messed up last night. Maybe you just got paranoid. It's okay, I won't tell. He smiled that smile of his with the crinkly eyes. I didn't understand how I could still find him so attractive. But you can't just accuse people of shit like this. It will ruin my life. The more he denied it, the more certain I was. I didn't know what had happened with Allie or what could have happened. I couldn't even think it. I just knew that he wasn't this great guy who wanted us to think he was. He'd fooled us all for a while, but not me, not anymore. I know what I saw, I repeated uselessly. He stepped back, shrugged a little. You didn't see anything. You saw me helping a kid out. That's it. He yawned, shook out his head. Look, I appreciate you looking out for the girls, but it's late and I'm sure you want to get back to bed. We can all talk in the morning. As his light bobbed into the trees, I stood there next to the stinky outhouse. I gulped and swallowed, looked up at the sky. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what would happen. I turned out my light, waited for my eyes to adjust, and listened to the wind, to the trees whip and crash in the wind. Maybe I'd disappear into the night, evaporate like that miserable hiker in the woods. Thank you.